Hello and welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'm always coming at you with content out of the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about whether or not a PhD is going to help you when trying to get into the field of machine learning. This is a very common question that I see on message boards among prospective data scientists. Before I answer that question, I should go more into the path that I took. I am one of the poor souls that did complete a PhD degree and my specialty was in materials engineering. A large percentage of the work that I did involved a lot of computational analysis. I did a lot of Python, MATLAB, uh, a lot of simulations, learned programming that way, uh, eventually segued into a lot of kind of clustering techniques. Uh, all along the way, did a lot of programming, even though my uh, degree is not exactly in computer science. I do think my PhD helped me in my job search right out of grad school. I do think it helped kind of get my leg in the door with my first job and maybe a job after that. Uh, but from there, I think my experience is probably more valued than the actual degree. And even for my first job, I don't necessarily know if having a PhD makes you better suited for the job. There are plenty of extremely qualified people graduating from college with bachelor's and master's degrees that are just as well suited as some other PhDs that I've seen. Kind of goes back to that whole college versus no college thing. Uh, the way I see it is a degree is pretty much a credential. It is not necessarily required to be good at something. And there's tons and tons of people who never even went to college who are, have accomplished amazing things in their life. That being said, this video is about how a PhD will or will not help you in the field of data science or machine learning. Uh, so those with PhDs who don't have a PhD in computer science are still sought after. Uh, so, like I said, mine's not in computer science. I do think employers really like to see those with doctoral degrees. It shows you have the ability to be able to really think through tough and uh, kind of abstract problems that without a clear uh, kind of route on how to solve it. Uh, it shows you have a lot of grit and can persevere through challenges uh, because they're planning to throw a whole bunch of tough projects on your plate. And they don't want to have to really babysit you and, and show you how to do those projects they want people who are independent thinkers and can come up with really creative solutions. And uh, getting a PhD does teach you a lot of those skills. Another reason why they like PhDs is because a lot of times, and especially in the STEM fields, you have done a lot of data analysis. And usually for this, you'll use something along the lines of Python, R, or MATLAB uh, to, to really analyze large data sets. And you also have to have a rudimentary understanding of statistics. So Employers kind of like the, the baseline set of skills that PhDs will provide. And if you're a PhD student watching this right now who's in the STEM field, but maybe not in a hard computer science uh, specialty or mathematics specialty, uh, and you want to go into data, try to find more ways you can apply uh, programming and statistical methods and automation into your experimental workflows. This is going to provide value for both your doctoral advisor, and it's going to provide immediate uh, impact on your, your thesis and your, your experiments. It's also going to look great down the road for your job hunt if you want to go into data. A PhD degree in mathematics or computer science is definitely going to be the best combination of you know having that advanced degree and a specialty that's essentially the foundation of machine learning. Uh, so if you're one of the few that are, are doing a PhD in these fields, uh, props to you. You have an extremely bright future ahead of you. Uh, just continue working hard and companies are going to swoop you up really quick, especially if you're from some of the top schools. And speaking of top schools, that brings me to another point where not all PhD degrees are viewed equally. There is definitely a bias with graduate schools in terms of exactly where they fall on a spectrum of sort of prestige. Uh, you know, obviously like your, your Ivy League or, or MIT schools are going to be at the top. These have some serious reputation and you'll be able to work essentially anywhere you'd, you'd really want. Um, at the very top tech companies for some of their, their coveted research positions, they do tend to prefer people from those extremely prestigious universities. However, there are outliers, but they, they tend to be uh, fewer and far between. If you're not gunning for a top research position at Google, you can still have an extremely successful career. Uh, there's there's tons of other companies that will swoop you up. Uh, I say that because that's that's me. I do not have my PhD from an Ivy League university. 
Uh, yet I developed a pretty valuable skill set during the degree, and I think employers really liked that. Okay, so a few of the things that we've covered so far, there are different factors that affect how a PhD is going to be viewed by an employer, uh, such as research field or your university's reputation. And like I said, overall, my opinion is that a PhD does help in your job search. That being said, a doctoral degree should definitely not be your goal if you're just looking as kind of an accolade or, or credential to get a better job. Uh, you should only get a PhD, and this is a, a big disclaimer, <laughs> only get a PhD if you really, really love your field and you love the thought of solving hard, unsolved problems in that field and you like doing original research. If you're trying to just use this as a credential to, to get a better job, I think you're going to have an even tougher time than it already is uh, in completing that degree. So I've talked a ton about PhDs and their, their job prospects, but getting back to sort of the central question of this video, which is, do you really need a PhD to be successful in machine learning? And the answer to that question is absolutely not. I've seen people with a very, very wide variety of backgrounds be very successful in this field. Some have had bachelors in mathematics or computer science and have been able to get their foot in the door at top tech companies and then really move quickly up the technical ranks, uh, sometimes becoming staff engineers or principal engineers. Uh, so, you know, it, this really goes to show that, that PhDs are not required to, to get in and then move up at these, these really good tech companies. A good hiring manager is really going to be able to see through anything that you put on your resume and determine if that's really going to help you uh, do the job. They'll ask you a lot of tough technical questions and see how you think. Uh, some hiring managers might see the PhD and think, oh, well, they're, they, they must be good. They have a PhD. Uh, others are going to really be skeptical and say, well, yeah, they have a PhD, but can they think and solve these really tough problems that we're going to have for them? And I think sometimes it works for PhDs and sometimes it doesn't. And certain hiring managers are going to check all that type of stuff. So to really prepare for jobs, no matter what your background, just work on developing your skill and your technical knowledge. So be able to apply your technical knowledge through programming, analyzing large data sets, uh, predicting things with, with machine learning models, uh, really developing soft skills as well, communicating, uh, you know, writing papers, that type of stuff. These skills are all going to really shine through in interviews and it can definitely outshadow a credential like a PhD. And once you get a job or two under your belt, uh, then they're really not even gonna be looking hardly at all at your, your education. It's gonna be purely about what you did at your, your previous company or your previous several companies. And what sort of impact did you have? Uh, and ultimately the question they, they wanna have an answer to is how much money did you make those companies? <laughs> and if you can, you can show that you had a huge impact on a project that made millions of dollars through your deployment of your machine learning model, you're going to become a very hot asset in the uh, job market no matter what. All right, so that's about all I have for you on this episode of AI Buzz. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to be back at you very, very soon with more AI and machine learning content. Stay tuned and have a good day. Bye.